Hi, my name is Dr. Alex Touchstone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the guidelines around all ceramic crown preps, specifically whenever we decide to use Emacs as our material of choice. The first thing I'm going to consider is the occlusal reduction required for this particular material. Because we're using Emacs CAD, we need about a millimeter and a half of occlusal reduction. Now, in order to accomplish this accurately, I'm going to use a round burr. I'm going to use a Premier L120C. When I sink this burr down into the occlusal surface, I'm reducing the occlusal surface by about a millimeter and a half. And by creating dots across the occlusal surface, I have a reduction guide that I can then connect using my secondary burr, which in this case will be a round end tapered burr. But as you can see, the first step is just to simply sink this burr down into the occlusal surface of the tooth. Next, I'm going to take my round end tapered burr and I'm going to connect those dots in order to achieve the correct occlusal reduction. Very simple, very fast, and then I know that I have adequate reduction for this particular material for an all ceramic crown preparation. Next we're going to pick up a flame shape burr in order to break the interproximal contact. The obvious goal here is to avoid inadvertently damaging the proximal surface of the adjacent tooth or teeth. Now we might choose to recontour the adjacent surface if we're not happy with the proximal tooth contour. Next we're going to go straight into the axial reduction for this tooth, taking into consideration the material reduction requirements for the material that we have selected. Now in this case I'm going to use a round end tapered burr. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I do that in just a moment, but first let's go through the steps. Uh, just as we did with the occlusal surface, we're going to create some indexing reductions. These reductions will give us a guidance as to the depth to which we want to reduce the axial surface all the way around. I'm going to sink about half the width of this particular burr into the axial wall of the prep. This will give me about a millimeter of reduction. Next we'll go around the circumference of the tooth and just connect these depressions that have been created with the round end tapered burr. And again, this ensures that I'm going to have about a millimeter of reduction all the way around. Now I mentioned to you before that I'm using a round end tapered burr as opposed to a KR burr. This may be contrary to what you've heard is required for all ceramic restorations. Uh, and certainly the caveat is we want to be careful not to create a lip at the margin using this round end tapered burr. However, the advantage is that whenever I transition vertically around my prep, such as through the interproximal region, I don't run the risk of creating steps in my margin as I move more gingivally and then more coronally with the tip of the burr. So that's my rationale for using a round end tapered burr. I get a much smoother preparation in the end and I just must be very careful not to create that lip or J margin with the burr. Now that we've gotten the general outline for our prep, it's time to refine things a bit. We need to go back and remove some decay and then potentially fill in those areas that uh, we've removed in order to avoid any undercuts. So you can see I've removed the decay on the adjacent teeth and now I'm going to remove the decay that's on the crown prep that we're working on using a diamond tipped round end burr. Uh, this works very well for removing sclerotic or decayed dentin and uh, so you can see it just comes off very nicely. So we get that uh, decay out of there and then we can make a decision as to whether we're going to adjust the prep or perhaps fill in that depression with some composite resin. We might also use a 330 burr in order to refine that decay removal even further down in those very tight marginal areas. Now that we've removed all the decay, let's go back and refine our preparation. In order to do that, I'm going to begin to work on my tissue control. I'm going to place some retraction cord. This retraction cord does not have any hemostatic agent in it, by the way. This is a, um, a dry cord. Uh, this happens to be a number one cord and we're going to place that down in the sulcus of the crown prep and perhaps also the tooth adjacent to it or distal to it. So we'll get those preparations all nice and clean and dry and then we're going to fill in those cavity preparations with some composite resin. Now it's important of course to use a composite resin that has a shade that's equivalent to the prepped tooth shade. So in this case we've got some A3 composite resin there and although it looks a little lighter at the moment once it's uh, been light cured it will blend nicely with the preparation. We're going to sculpt that into the uh, preparations and then of course light cure it and then we're going to do our final preparation refinement steps. So in order to do this final 
refinement of the preparation, I'm going to use a round and tapered burr again with the same diameter as before. However, this one is a fine grit diamond. And this will give me more control whenever I'm working around that margin and also help me to avoid that J margin that we talked about before. As my last refinement step, I'm going to switch to another fine grit round end tapered burr, but this one has a smaller diameter at the tip. Now this is going to allow me to get into this tighter distal interproximal area a little bit more effectively and allow me also to do some very careful axial refinement as well as rounding those transitions between the occlusal surface and the axial walls. These rounded transitions are very important. We don't want to create any focal points of stress in our final ceramic restoration. Now that we have our preparation geometry finalized, we need to focus on tissue control. A little bit of time spent here will pay huge dividends in the quality of our impression. So we've already placed some retraction cord, now we're going to place some Traxident uh, hemostatic paste in order to effectively retract that tissue. Uh, the technique is very simple, we just uh, inject this around the marginal areas and then we're going to have the patient close on the uh, preparation and the paste with a compression cap for a couple of minutes. Uh, once that's done, we'll rinse all that off and you'll be able to see for yourself just how clearly that margin is visible in the impression that we're going to make. So now let's go ahead and get our optical impression and then take a look at the quality of our virtual model that results. In this case, we're using our plan scan scanner and we're going to rotate that and roll it around so we can get the interproximals and all of the data that we need. Now, whenever we look at the stone model, the margin is not entirely clear. However, whenever we go over to our ice view, we can see very clearly the distinction between hard and soft tissue, even in the areas where our margin is subgingival, as you can see on the screen. So this gives us a high degree of confidence that we're going to be able to locate that margin accurately and thus end up with a restoration that has excellent marginal fit. In fact, whenever I toggle back and forth between the stone view and the ice view after the margin has been located, we can see that our margin is located very accurately. And again, this gives us a high degree of confidence that we've got our margin exactly where it needs to be. So now that we have our crown ready, we're just going to go through the standard all ceramic bonding protocol. In this case, we used uh, multi-link, and so the tooth was prepared for bonding using the multi-link steps and the ceramic as well. The restoration is tack cured in place. We do a little final cleanup and then a final curing. And then we'll take a look at the final result. So now as we inspect our final restoration, we can see that we've got a beautiful crown restoration. Uh, the aesthetics are where we want them to be. The margin just disappears even though it's super gingival there on the lingual. And the patient will be happy with that result. I hope this video has been helpful to you. For other videos around this technique, go to cadcamcan.com. Thank you for watching.